I'm at Heathrow Airport. When you think of engineering, you do think of planes, but I'm here today to discover all the other engineering that allows planes to come in and planes to go out. There's so much to it. So we're on the edge of taxiway. T is trying to find out where incoming planes that are landing are going to park up. And then we're going to go and look at the parking system because it's a really sophisticated bit of engineering where there's lasers and everything to guide the plane into place. We are here. 317 is here. That's the plane. A350 has just landed from San Francisco and I heard on the radio that they're parking up at stand 317. Now I want to show you the laser guided machine that actually helps us park up these planes at the airport. So here it is, it's coming into land. Let's see if anyone's done the honors of switching it on yet. And then look when it says stop, stop. So all that tells the pilots is exactly where to stop. And where are the lasers coming out from? So if you look closely, you see there's the screen and then there's the right hand side, there's a little slit in the metal and inside there is where the lasers are. We have a laser and two mirrors because you don't want the laser to keep moving. So instead we just use mirrors and those mirrors will be able to really span a massive range and be able to take a look at the whole, the whole stand. When a plane comes in, it looks for three things. It's trying to look for the engines of the plane. And it's trying to look for the Is nose of the plane. Is it using image recognition? Uh, so yeah, so it's a form of image recognition, but it's quite simplistic. It already knows what this plane should look like. And it knows where this plane should park Based up at. The model. Exactly, so we've already uploaded everything onto this air, onto this stand. I mean, just in that bridge alone, there is so much engineering. Yeah. Oh, what's the lower area come down? What's the lower area come down? We probably can get it close up. Ah, uh, yeah. There you go. You get it. And now, number one, it's told the person who's operating it that, okay, we've, we've landed, it works. But also, the functionality beyond that is to make sure that it goes up and down as the plane goes down. The work hasn't stopped yet, it's just started. The teams are now already beginning to line themselves up, start to unload all of the cargo from there. But it's beautiful how like this whole engine just works on the fact that you can take air, compress it, add a bit of fuel, and like ignite it, and then it comes out a lot faster on the back. And that is literally that simple philosophy is what helps us fly, fly around the world. Million pound engines, that tip when it used to get really cold in the sky, it used to freeze. The interns at Rolls Royce, well, why don't we just make it out of plastic? Plastic can't freeze. So they implemented it and it actually worked. I feel like I'm uh, on the underbelly of a whale. That's what it feels like. The way the planes work is it's, it's just the, the four, four forces. You have lift up, weight down, thrust forward, drag back. And the engines do nothing to push the plane up. The only thing the engines do is they push the plane forwards. But because they're pushing the plane forwards at such a speed, it means there's a lot of wind going over the wings. And because of the amount of wind going over the wings, that's when the physics of lift generate a lift. But a lot of people would think that the engines are what are putting the plane up. No, engines just push the plane forward. Yeah, it's actually the, it's wings the wings that do a lot of the work. And they're not even doing work. They just have such a shape. Exactly that they take advantage of yeah. Bernoulli's principle. Yeah, yeah. It's such a beautiful, simple process. Yeah. I never ever think of the things that you are completely preoccupied with, yeah. which is all the other engineering that allows this bit of engineering to do its job well. We're at Terminal 3 right now. And actually what's amazing is that we're looking over one of the runways at Heathrow Airport. 1991, my parents fled Iraq, they came to the UK and they landed on one of these two runways here at Heathrow Airport. They came to Terminal 3, they came off the plane and they started a whole new life here in the UK. I wasn't even born yet, but like my journey in the UK technically started off on those runways. And now, 30 years later, I'm literally the engineer that maintains the lights to make sure that planes can still land just as safely and more people can go on their adventures or start new lives using those same runways. So for me, it's really gone full circle. It's a circle of life right here. Yeah. Speaking of the runways, let's get close to the runway. Yeah, 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 let's do it. Up. 
literally on the side of the runway. This is as close as you're ever going to get. There's a plane coming behind us there. Wow. The joy on engineers' faces when the plane lifts off the ground. It's such a phenomenon of engineering. The puff of smoke, that must be an indication of like how hard it touches the surface, right? Exactly. Because every time you see one of those puffs of smoke and you actually smell it in the air, you can smell the rubber in the air. Yeah, that rubber, rubber is gets smothering the lights completely. So every time that nose landing it touches down, it smothers Ooh. the lights. Actually, can, it's really strong. You can smell the rubber. What we saw today was only the tip of the iceberg. There is so much more engineering going on. So stay tuned for part two, because we're going to come back at night to see how planes are guided in and out of this airport thanks to lighting.